I'm very excited because I'm outside so I have to wear my mask, but I'm very excited because today is the first day of the California Dreaming Show and guess who's here? <laughs> this is Erica Pratt. Erica Pratt is one of the most talented local writers who's been writing about art. A lot of the regular writers have not been able to, to, to be here to write and Erica lives here and I'm just really excited because we've been, you know, you've, you've covered three or four of our different shows. Yeah, I think three now. Yeah, yeah, three. She's written three articles for Hamptons Magazine. And uh, we're going to go inside and we're going to stand apart and take our masks off. But I'm going to show you that Hamptons Magazine cover and a little bit of the article. And you just visited... Um, Marianne and Edwina Lucas. Uh, the Lucases, home. the mother-daughter. And she wrote a whole article about it. So let's go inside. <laughs> so we're going to do the socially distant thing, but um, uh, Erica is, um, she went on a studio visit, Marianne Lucas is the mother of Edwina Lucas, and the, both of them have been professional artists working out here. Edwina got back, I don't know when she got out of college, six, seven years ago? Six years ago. Six years? Yeah. Yeah, so, and actually Edwina worked for me for a year, and she left working for the Grenning Gallery to become a full-time artist. Edwina went to work in John Alexander's studio, who just so happened to be, and I don't know if you know this. I think I do. <laughs> you me. What do you know? It was her mother's ex-boyfriend. From many, many, from many years. From when they were, when, when, when uh, Marianne was in her 20s. But they adore him. And they adore him, and he's a very talented artist, and I see a lot of his influence on Edwina's work. Mm -hmm. But I also see Edwina stepping into a place where she's using her training, uh, both in his studio and at um, college. She went to... Um, she went to Skidmore. Skidmore, yeah. Skidmore. Which has an, a really wonderful studio program, which I don't say about a lot of US universities. Um, anyhow, I see that work progressing. I also see Marianne Lucas stepping into her own as well. But it's interesting, because in this show, we have two paintings of their garden, but they're very different. It's the same subject, even in the garden. Absolutely. The two, um, it's, it's, it's very funny because you have the mother who was, you know, quote unquote, sort of untrained, and then the daughter who went to school and she had the backing and all the confidence that academia provides. And they, the two of them, I mean, self described with the wind between each other's wings. So they really have um, lifted each other up. And I think not even just personally, but professionally as artists, I think the two of them are each other's toughest critics, but they're also really, really insightful and, and really malleable. And I think that their artwork is better because of the collaboration. And because they're mother and daughter, it makes that connection even stronger. Yeah, and one of the things I've always said about the classical um, art movement is that it's a team sport which is very yeah. different from the, night, the 20th century idea of an artist alone in a white room, not being influenced by anyone. Um, anyone who's been in a classical atelier knows that you, only, you get better but the more eyes that, go, that look at your work and yeah. that you need to constantly be checking in with another set of eyes. Um, that's also why they use uh, mirrors upside down or black mirrors, that's how they check themselves. But um, I want to show you the cover of the magazine. This is one of the nicest uh, magazines, one of the most stylish magazines. This is the magazine, and actually here's the article, which I think is on our website, and we're gonna, we're gonna social media this if we haven't already. Um, and uh, I wanna take you back and show you a little bit, show you the two of the paintings. We do have a lot of their work with us, uh, this show is called California Dreaming, and so what I did was I actually was inspired mostly by seeing the sketches that Mark and Tina D'Alessio had done when I was up in Boston in February. They were on their way back from California, heading to Portugal. Um, actually, actually, I think they might have been, no, I don't know if they went painting in Vermont with everybody, but anyhow, I was very much um, inspired by their plein air paintings of California, and so I, I knew I wanted to have a group show with my best artists in August, and we called it California Dreaming because there are a lot of plein air paintings of California, which you'll see in a different Instagram post. 
But I also um, know that many Californians are gardeners, and so we, we slotted um, Marianne and um, Edwina's. This is called Dream Garden, actually. So I don't know if you want to say anything about sure. the plant. Um, so, so Edwina and Marianne kind of they have curated this very um, beautiful, well, they do two things. They go out and play there, and then they also, in their own garden, which I was so, like when I drove up, just the smells of the garden were amazing, even their out, even their in, like interior sort of car park garden was beautiful. And they've kind of casually curated it. And so they chase these flowers and they told me a very, really sweet and endearing story. Because in, in a lot of ways they're realist painters, but they, but there's so much, you know, emotion and kind of empathy um, for nature involved in all these things. But they, but they get very um, excited when a bee comes to <laughs> pollinate on the actual painting because then they're like, okay, it's uh, done. Yeah, my, so, I, well, that's, so, yeah, that's yeah. great. That's so a confirmation. It's, yeah, it's a very sweet. And, the, you know, they, they trudge out even in the winter and they chase these flowers. And the flowers for them, you know, they, they told me, and I put this in the article, that they, they're not creating works. Um, they're business-minded, but they're not creating works because they want to sell them like hotcakes or because they want to do, they, they do things because they see so much beauty in the, these flowers and you certainly see it in their garden, which they, um, they've curated themselves, which is, which is absolutely beautiful. And their home in general is just very charming. So yeah. Um, so, and what I wanted to point out is that this is the same garden at the same time of year, totally different takes. Mm -hmm. um, Edwina has, um, Really, I see the influence of John Alexander here in that she has a repeating image, but each one looks individually observed. So it's not like, I know how to paint a Cosmo, here's a Cosmo, Cosmo, Cosmo. It's yeah. not like a, like a toile. Um, and she's also very mindfully managed this, um, the, the, the configuration of the flowers and the placement, almost like musical notes again, which um, she's done this to create a composition of her own, um, inspired by what was in front of her. This does not look like a snapshot of a garden, number one. Number two, she no. totally created the black background. Uh, I know this garden and it's not black behind there, but that was a way to highlight the external shape of these flowers. And it's very abstract. She also created a diptych, which is another way to kind of break the viewer's like illusionistic you know, she's like, no, this is not an illusionistic image. I want you to know I'm in control here. Um, I, I just think that this is a very masterful composition. Um, it's a lot of painting for the price, I have to tell you. Um, it, right? Um, and I just love her control of the colors, too, which is probably done when they planted the garden. Well, the interesting thing, too, is so if you, so Mary Ann, when she started working, she was working on very small canvases very small campuses. And when Edwina came, and Edwina's the one who pushed her to, to confront a larger canvas. So some of, you know, Marianne's works are so tiny and so detailed. Um, and I really love seeing her get, get onto yeah, a bigger, come around and look at this get onto a bigger canvas. And one of the things that Edwina is, is so interested with her mother's work is is Marianne has this gut reaction to color. And oftentimes they will, she will t show her how to mix something in a way because the colors for, for Marianne come very easily. So it's really the, you know, a symbiotic relationship between the two, but I, I, but I really love that she moved to the bigger canvases because the, the smaller works, as amazing as they are, they just translate very well to a bigger format. Yeah, I think that it's interesting you talk about color. The irony is there's much more contrast in color in Edwina's mm -hmm. work at this time. And this was... More subdued. Well, this is very subdued, and this is Marianne, like, yeah. um, basically pushing herself to really look at nature instead of um, putting a lot of color on, and I think you end up with a very poetic, you know, very, uh, finished painting. Very elegant. Very elegant, very, very quiet, and, restrained. and restrained, and also, like, the we lose 
you know, they're not outlined. They get lost kind of into the mess. I don't know if you want to get a close to that. And we do have a lot more work in the, I'll let you go by. Um, we do have a lot, oh, sorry, we're out of the picture. We do have a lot more by Marianne, new paintings by Marianne, especially a couple key landscapes. Uh, they didn't work in the show because they weren't ca Californian landscapes, but we do have those and um, we have a beautiful lily pond painting by um, Edwina that we were, are happy to pull out if you come by the gallery. Um, but I'm just very, very excited to have the coverage. Where's that magazine that we put down right here? Here's the Hamptons magazine cover again. And Erica, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, anything else? You want to say anything else? No, no, no. I, I, I was just, it was just a, a pleasure to meet, um, to meet both of them. And it was, um, and I'm very excited to see what they're, it seems to me that there are two artists that, that are truly artists. And this is their path. And they're not, and they're, you know, the sky's sort of the limit, which is a very um, wonderful and, um, and, and, you know, an ambitious goal, but I think one that's very achievable for both of them. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, as much as I can be a part of that, yeah. I'm trying to be the jet fuel. Instead of the wind in their sails, I'll be the, so jet, fuel the jet fuel in their sails. With <laughs> <laughs> aliens. Or, or their <laughs> engines. <laughs> All right. Um, okay, good. Well, happy Saturday, everybody. Happy and, Saturday. Um, and please come to the show, and we're going to post some more about the uh, California Dreaming show. <laughs>